All right, today we're going to be talking about the top five plugins that I have in my ZSH configuration. Well, actually, these are the only five plugins that I have, but they are pretty useful, so I'm going to show you what these are. And these aren't any game-changing plugins that are going to completely revolutionize the way you do things, but when you're working in the shell, it's just nice to have a few of these plugins. They just provide some niceties, and they make working in the shell a little bit easier. So let me just go over all of these in order. And in this video, I'm going to assume that you already know how to install ZSH plugins. If you don't, I have another video on installing the plugins manually that I'll link somewhere up here. Or alternatively, you can use all my ZSH or any of these other countless plugin managers. Those are all fine. Or you can just look up how to do it on any of the GitHub pages that I have here. But anyway, let's get into which plugins I have here. I'm not going to be going over the theme either. So some people will ask what theme I have here. I already have a video on that as well, but that's not what I'm going to go over. I am just going to go over the plugins right here, but the theme is Power Level 10K if you want to check that out. But let's start with the ZSH Syntax Highlighting plugin. So this is a very useful plugin that I have. Let me just clear this out. And basically this is going to provide highlighting to let you know if the command you're typing in is correct or not. So if I just type in some random command right here is going to show as red just because there's no command called that. And if I run something that I do actually have like this, then it's going to return green. So that's useful. If I want to go into a directory or a file, I can start typing. And if it has an underline under it, then that is something that actually exists. But if there is no underline under it, then the file path or directory does not actually exist. So that's useful as well. So you know that you're actually typing in something that exists in this folder. And just those two basic commands are worth the price of admission. I use these all the time. And uh, if I type in some command that I don't actually have installed, like I think I would have it installed like this, but I don't actually, that just lets me know that I actually have to install it or do something or I spelled it wrong. That is very useful. But also if you do any sort of bash scripting as well, this can be useful to just let you know if you have any typos or things like that. So for example, I can, let's say I want to echo something. I want to pay $5 to Joe as an example. But as you can see, it highlights this uh, dollar sign five right here. And that's because this is actually uh, reserved by bash. This means something in bash. So if I just enter, it's not going to display correctly. And that's because I actually have to put a backslash here in order for it to display correctly. All right, that's more what I wanted. So that can be useful if you're working with bash scripts. Next up, let's do something that I use all the time, and this is ZSH auto completions, or I think it's called ZSH auto suggestions. And this will automatically pre-fill whenever you're typing. Let me just show you. So if I type CD or if I type Vim, if you kind of look closely here, you can see the grayed out suggestion right here. So it's looking through my history and then auto completing it based on what I last used in my history. So the last thing I did with Vim was open up .zshrc. So that's useful if I just want to run that command again. I can just hit the right arrow key and it will pre-fill all that for me. And that's really useful if you have some longer command like I recently used this cwebp command. And if you want to use this a lot, it can kind of be annoying to remember this entire sequence right here. So it's useful to have this and then just be able to hit right arrow key and it pre-fills all that for you. So that's really useful. It'll just give you all these suggestions as you work around. So I can just type something like this and it'll automatically help me out. It'll kind of guess what I want to do. And a lot of the time it is correct, so it is very useful. And I will leave links to all of these in the description. I have up here all the GitHub repositories for this, and they have installation instructions on all of these. So I will leave links to the, all these in the description. But another useful one that I used a lot is the ZSH history substring search. Now it's kind of a mouthful, but what this allows you to do is search through your history just by typing in up or down on your keyboard. So let me just give you an example. Let's say I want to find uh, some command that I ran before that has the word ZSH somewhere in it. So what I can do is just type ZSH and just, then just go up or down and it will scroll through the history and find all of the commands that I used with ZSH in it. 
And so I can scroll through those with up. And so if I ran a command before, but I'm not exactly sure what it was, and I want to find it again, I can just type in a word from that command and then just scroll up and down to find it. So I can go way back and maybe find something that I used before. So this is really useful for searching your history. You don't have to break out grep or anything in order to look through your history. And you do need to configure this a little bit. Let me just open up the ZSHRC file again. And you do need to bind the up and down arrow keys for this to make this work properly. So this uh, weird character string right here is just my up arrow. And I believe this will probably be the same for years as well. But if you're not sure, you can go cat-v and then hit the up key, hit the down key, and it will return the proper symbols for each of these. And then you can go and paste that in here. So up for me is A, down for me is B. So you would paste this in here, bind key that, and then history substring search up and down. And so that's why it actually works when I type in something here. So I can type in cat and then up and down. And that's how you actually get that to work. You would add these two commands right here. And next let's go over this auto notify plugin right here. So this is really useful if you have some command running and it's gonna take a while, maybe a few minutes, maybe a long while, and you don't wanna constantly check on it to see if it's done or not. So let me just give you an example. Let's say I have a command that says sleep for 11 seconds, and this will just wait 11 seconds and then finish. But if you have some longer running command where maybe you're updating packages on your system or you're uploading something, this notification here will pop open on the upper right of your screen and just tell you that the command has completed. It'll tell you how long it took. And so that's really useful so you don't have to constantly check on these scripts. It will just send you a notification when it's finished. And it'll also return the error code. So if there was an error, it will tell you that an error happened so you can go and check on it. It will tell you if it completed successfully. And so I let it wait for 11 seconds because by default, if it's under 10 seconds, then it won't send me a notification. That's too brief to care about, which is nice. And there's also some commands that you probably don't want to be notified about. Uh, so let me just show you the defaults at least. So by default, it will ignore all of these. So if you run vim, nvim, manual, git commit, or any of these, is not going to pop up a notification after you finish that because you probably don't want a notification that you finished your vim session. That's not something that you'd ever need. And you probably want to add more into these because sometimes uh, this can be a little bit annoying if you have some command that you don't want it running for. So what you can do is open up your config file and put this at the bottom. You would just add auto notify ignore and then this plus equal will add these to the array um, that I showed you before. So all the defaults plus these commands. Whenever I'm building a website with Hugo and I have a development server running, I don't want it to notify me after I finish with that. So you can add to this list to your heart's content. And finally, the last plugin I use is the You Should Use plugin. And this is very useful. What it does is it will let you know if you run a command and you have another alias for it that you should be using instead. Because I don't know about you guys, but what I do a lot is I set up all these git aliases and then I forget to actually use them. I just use the normal commands like I normally would and I completely forget that I have some easier alias to use. So just as an example, I've aliased VS Codium, this code editor to code, which is easier to type. And so if I run VS Codium right here, then it will actually tell me it found an existing alias for this and you should use just code instead. So that's easier to type. This is really helpful if you're stupid like me and forget all of your aliases after you make them. And especially if you use something big like uh, oh my ZSH, it probably comes with a bunch of pre-built aliases that you might not even know about. So if you install this plugin, it will tell you where you're missing out and how to make things a little bit more efficient. And those are all the plugins that I use on a daily basis. And they make my life working in the terminal just a little bit easier. So I highly recommend these if you use Z Shell and you want to start doing a little bit of configuration. I'm sure if you've done any research at all, you've probably heard of at least a couple of these already. But I will leave links to all these in the description so you can go out and install whatever plugins make you happy.